2019 is wrapping up, and as we don our festive sweaters, we also have to decide what were the best games this year. That's right, it is time that we do our top 10 for 2019. Yeah, my sweater, by the way, is a lot more festive than yours. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, missed that memo. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it was uh, eaten by dogs. Oh, well, that happens from time mm. to time. Uh, this is a big deal, people. We're talking about our top 10 board games of the entire year. We don't know each other's lists, as always. We're going to go back and forth naming our starting from number 10, going all the way up to number one. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will just say before we start that I think for both of us, this was one of the more difficult years to nail down. I think we played more games this year than most years, and I think there are also more, in my opinion, great games than in some of the past few years. And I had a lot of trouble figuring out where things were going on my list, and I still feel bad about leaving some off. <laughs> I mean, there was a, a large variety of games. I think it's more of just that we had the chance to play more. Right now, let's actually hit with maybe a honorable mention. This is oh, it could be number 11, or maybe something that didn't make quite the top 10 for weird reasons, but we think worth that needs to be mentioned in some reason. What, let's start with yours. What's your honorable mention? All right, my honorable mention this year. So I'll say that there are there are a bunch of like games that I could have put as my like number eleven, but I like to use my honorable mention for more as something that's a little like not necessarily a traditional board game, like something weirder that probably won't be on anyone's lists. So for me this year, it is uh, wish you were here. This, is, this was a Kickstarter project from the Enigma Emporium. It's a set of postcards with puzzles on them. <laughs> and uh, you can buy this right now. It's in their store. It's like 10, 15 bucks or something. It's a set of postcards with escape room style puzzles. Uh, the kind of thing that I really had a lot of fun with. They're just solving clues, figuring out mysteries. Sometimes you might want to look something up online. You know, like a lot of these games, uh, a lot of code stuff and cryptography. Right. Uh, I just really had a lot of fun with that. They have a couple other ones in the same vein too. Yeah, a great choice if you are a fan of puzzles to get just get a little thing in the mail each day. It's and really nice. I did them all by myself, but you could like team up with people and, and do them that way. That's too. right. You were smart enough to do them by himself. I will require <laughs> help from him when I get a chance to look at it. So my honorable mention, the reason why I decided honorable is I think it could have hit the top 10, but for some reasons that, and it's not technically complete, I thought it'd be better to put it as an honorable mention because I know they're going to change in the next box, and that's Midara Act 1. This is a campaign game that I really like the story of, and that's one of the reasons it almost made, it has a lot of hooks and I want to keep playing it because you don't make a character. They, I mean, you do design them, but they have specifically named characters, so you're really following the story. It's more like watching a TV show with named characters, but the rule book really needs some work, which they're doing, and they've, I don't, I think they have a updated one now online, but in their new Act 2, they're gonna have some upgrades, not only for the rule book, but also some changes to some of the cards that maybe were under or overpowered and stuff. So I really did love the campaign, and when I actually got past the rules and understanding and playing it, like the time when I played it off with a friend while you were playing uh, Battlestar, <laughs> it, like, we had so much fun. But then, you know, it just, I think it had, it was a little bit rough. It's like the gem that needs that final polishing, which yeah. I expect to see in Act 2. I think that's a really strong choice for honorable mention. I mean, I, I thought that that might have even been somewhere on your list, but I think it, it Actually, sense. it was for a while, but then I'm like, I think this fits that honorable mention because I think it had those rough patches that I see in Act 2 are going to be really, make it shine a lot better. All right, so shall we get to our list proper, mm -hmm. starting with number 10 and going down? Yeah, I, I guess. guess I'll start this time. <laughs> sure, sure, why not? All uh, right. All right. So my number 10, uh, just in time for the new movie, is Star Wars Outer Rim. This is the Star Wars Fantasy Flight game when you play more of sort of the... Uh, the scum and villainy, I guess, kind of deal where you're like on the outer rim, you're either delivering packages to collecting bounties, doing maybe some things illegal. It's almost like Firefly Light. And that's one of the reasons why I put it on here because I love the Firefly game. And the fact it's a little bit lighter is a little bit, is nice. Because I do, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, I've loved our Firefly games, but they can take a while. It's like how I love Arkham Horror Second Edition too. But you sort of understand that you're giving up your entire night. Yeah, <laughs> you better have four hours to play a game right now, uh, especially with our group. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. So my number 10, now i got to reference my list because I don't remember the exact order. Um, my number 10 is Imperial Settlers Empires of the North. Now, this is one that we did play together a little bit. I actually went back in preparation for this list and did some of the solo mode for this one so I could get some more experience with the uh, different factions that are included. But this is the takeoff of Imperial Settlers similar idea, but I feel like they refined a lot of the concepts, and I actually think in many ways it is an improvement 
on the base Imperial settlers. Um, it's a little bit more streamlined. It's a little bit quicker. Um, it doesn't have deck building, so like the factions are pre-made, so it's a little easier to get in, get out, ex add expansions and such. I also think the factions maybe are a little better balanced than we've felt in the original Imperial Settlers at this stage at least, but who knows, that always is changing. <laughs> um, but so the reason that's all the way at the bottom of my list is just because, you know, it is very close to Imperial Settlers. Uh, so for me, that's a little bit like it didn't do anything totally new, but I think it earns that spot just by virtue of being... I love Imperial Settlers, and I think this is maybe a little better, in, at least in some respects. That's my number 10. Uh, now, do we want to do the backs and forths thing? Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's my number nine yeah. next? All right. <laughs> All right. So uh, my number nine, then, you know, it's, it's appropriate that I go next, is Star Wars Outer Rim. <laughs> So we're pretty much right in line on that one uh, for really all the same reasons as you. Firefly, oops, don't drop your phone there. <laughs> Firefly is one of my favorite games of all time. So like, I really, I couldn't leave this off my list. Uh, I just love it. And I love the Star Wars universe so, so, so much. Um, even though this one is light, uh, it's still pretty he heavy. But yeah, the, oh yeah, when I say light. <laughs> it's, it's relative. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, like, like for all the things you said, I love the lore, I love the immersion. It does some really Really unique, innovative things. It's just a style of game that I love, exploring these planets and mm -hmm. building so, up my stuff. My number nine yep. was Imperial Settlers. Is oh, no. that true? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I like Imperial Settlers, and it did fix a lot of things. For example, one of the th big things for me was that, remember when we played with all the expansions in Imperial Settlers, we're like, oh, we're, we're, were we supposed to throw in these cards? And we found out we didn't throw these cards in to help balance out, because like, Someone was playing the Atlanteans. We had we needed Atlantean cards in our decks as well. Right, this is just right. like here's your deck, go, and that's really helpful. And that wheel thing I think is a really cute, clever mechanic. And honestly, I think it's if we played it, if I played it more, it might be a little bit higher on my list because that first playthrough I wasn't as crazy about my group, but I loved all the mechanics of it and want to play some of the other groups. And the reason why I did put it above. Outer Rim as well. Mm -hmm. It has expansions right now. So we know it's going to have more fun groups, which means more weird mechanics. As far as I know, Outer Rim hasn't gotten as much support, which I think it really needs. It seems like it's, yeah, the door's wide open for expansions on that Especially one. Especially with, but. like, you know, all the new movie stuff as well. It, right. But both of them, I thought, were pretty fun games. Yeah. So. Okay, I did not expect <laughs> us to be that in line this <laughs> early on the list. No, so. not at all. But... Uh, <laughs> Now that we're at eight, I'm pretty sure I'm deviating from you. I think. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be shocked. Because I think this is a pick more for me, and I don't think any other list is going to have this. So my number eight is Darwin's Choice. This is a Kickstarter campaign about pretty much building animals in different environments from parts, and then you try to make sure they survive. A very similar, we've seen this a lot like with evolution, but in this one, I feel like where that one you directly eat, eat each other's creatures and stuff, this is just, can your creature survive? And you may have to adopt be a lot weirder. It may not be as strong as before, but maybe you move it out as well and stuff. And it has a lot of stuff on the board. It can get a little confusing to track. But overall, it's just so much fun for me. Just for the base, and I'm so excited for that expansion to come where actually the human impact on nature will play a role. And dinosaurs. Oh, well, dinosaurs are technically in this. They have more dinosaurs. <laughs> right, right. More dinosaurs. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay, okay, Darwin's Choice. That's that's Will's Choice. <laughs> yeah, Will's Choice is Darwin's Choice. All right, now I'm on my number seven. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, no, my number eight. My yeah, number wow. Eight. <laughs> Don't want to skip any. Uh, I know how to count. Uh, my number eight is another licensed game. It's God of War, the card game from Come On or Simon, however you want to say their names. Um, and this one, of course, is based on the most recent God of War video game. It's a co-op, kind of a deck builder, uh, but with more going on, you're moving around a field and attacking a map. I just thought that the, we talked about it a lot in our review we did of this, but the me central mechanism of uh, flipping cards and having this tableau made up of multiple cards that can change the effects was so interesting and innovative and cool. Uh, and I had a lot of fun with that, along with you know the cooperative elements working together. And even, I don't even know that, honestly, the God of War theme is that strong in it, even though I am a fan of that theme, but which is part of why this one is so impressive to me, that I think it stands on its own just as a game. No, I definitely agree with that. I could love to see that maybe you could easily reskin that for some interesting properties, especially some of the final bosses. Like I know for me, I love the Valkyrie because it wasn't just 
the panels that we were used to, you put cards on top of cards to change this right. whole weird dynamic. It did crazy things. So, so there's a lot of fun things you could do with that. I would love to see them work more on that whatever the system they decide to call it. Right, so now is my number seven. Mm -hmm. Now is my number yes. seven. <laughs> All right, uh, my number seven is another one that's probably not on most people's list, like a little more obscure, I don't know about- Tic-tac-toe. Between the two of us, is uh, Growl. This is Growl from uh, Vigor Games. This is the party werewolf style game for a large group, you know, werewolf, hidden traders, etc. cetera. Uh, it does a similar thing that we've seen before, but it does it so quickly and in such a, a fun way uh, that I, I couldn't not put this one on my list too, just for the fact that we played it so many times and introducing it to different groups, everyone always really loved it. And I'm also a sucker for these kinds of games, which sometimes can be a mark against it just because there's so many of them. But in this case, I thought it stood out enough uh, that for me, Growl earned that spot on the list for number seven. I mean, we're going to be attracted to certain kind of games, but I think we've played enough at the point where, at least the way we've been talking outside of on camera, where we'll be like, I like this mechanic, but I like it just because it has the mechanic. I don't know if I like the game. <laughs> right, so right. I think we've gotten to that point where it might get us to the table. <sighs> but I, I agree with you, Growl definitely has that jump thing over the edge. Where, Anytime you have a game or after you finish, you like, want to do another round, I think it's a very good sign. All right, so now it's your number seven. It is my number seven. <laughs> so my number seven is going to the Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid. This, this is where I thought, when you said you were going to deviate, I thought this is what you were going to say. <laughs> I mean, I knew this one was just going to be a me, but the other one was like, I think a more interesting deviation. This is more like a, yeah, that's a will pick. <laughs> but I think this actually is a good game. It's not just because I like Power Rangers. I think the way the deck styles work and see your health and you have to go back and forth as well as just talking about how to work together and fighting the enemies and they have this cool grid style where, okay, I, if I attack this card, I actually hit everything adjacent to it. Or this card defended its, its adjacent, so you have to deal with that as well. I thought it was just really clever. And while I am a little, I am, the price is a little bit annoying, I think the game itself is at least fun and at least playing it doesn't feel like you're just paying for the minis. I do think the price has come down since, right. since this game's come Another out. Another cool thing which you actually haven't experienced with it is they've been actually releasing scenarios for free online. And some of them are like there's a Halloween theme one, a Christmas theme one that actually the way it'd work is when we we're playing I did like solo of playing it, it would if you were playing like the Black Ranger, I was playing like the Yellow Ranger, we'd then shift our decks over and stuff. Or or not our decks, our main ability. So like it's this whole like weird warping style. More free content to make up for all the expensive content. I think it's really nice and combined with a fun theme with the game, I think it just, it's one that I'm very excited to always have hit the table. Definitely, definitely a, a, a good, I mean, it's still good that even though you're a fan of that license, uh, which you, like could be seen as a bias. I also think it, it works against it because it means you maybe in some ways maybe are more critical because you want it to live up to your uh, uh, No, I mean, there's a game not on my list that has the license where I'm like, mm -hmm. I never even thinking like, yeah, I'm only liking this because it's the license. Right, right. <laughs> but I guess now it's on to my six. That's correct. On now, your six. My six is now a boring pick in terms of I know everyone loves it. <laughs> and Got that it. is Paladins of the West Kingdom. This is a worker placement game, the sequel to Architects of the West Kingdom. And in this game, unlike other worker placement when you share a board and are fighting for worker spots and that really is the game, this you have your own board. And the other thing it turns on head is usually in a worker placement game, you, gaining workers is like the obvious choice you want to go no matter what. In this, there's actually f a bunch of different colored workers. There's like one, the fighters, so you, you might need a red worker for a spot. There's actually criminals which are wild, but they give you sort of a penalty a little bit that may come back to bite you later. And you don't always need more workers. Sometimes because they fill up the spots, it's more of how can I do things more efficiently instead of just how can I do as much, as many things as possible. And it just, worked really well for me and with the goals and stuff that for a worker placement game, it's one that I really enjoyed and didn't feel like, compared to other ones, it played differently, didn't feel as guilty about. And there's also a lot of different strategies too, depending on what cards flip and what works for you. Yeah, yeah. We haven't played uh, Architects, but uh, we certainly we certainly played Paladins. Mm -hmm. And yeah, based on that, it's obviously a strong series. Like you said, everyone loves it. <laughs> it. It was a little hard for me to get into at first. I think just, mm -hmm. any of those games, but once I did, it was really fun, so. I was really ha pretty happy with it. All right, so my number six now. Mm -hmm. uh, my number six is 
The Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth. So this is number six. Another licensed game for me. I, I feel kind of bad about doing that because I feel like, I don't know, it's cheap. But you know what? Hey, they, I took Power Rangers. <laughs> they make good licensed <laughs> games these days. This is from Fantasy Flight, of course, and uh, really the basis for this, as we remarked a lot on, it feels like Mansions of Madness, and that's a game that we both love. And I think that in some ways, uh, kind of like Imperial Settlers Empires of the North does to the original, this streamlines and takes some aspects and does things that I like better in some ways than that. Of course, it's a very different game. It's fully co-op. Lord of the Rings theme obviously is a big deal. Uh, it has a campaign, so you're moving through an app and upgrading your cards. A lot of systems that I thought were really enjoyable and creative uh, for all the reasons, like I said, that I love mansions, but without the uh, kind of pressure that sometimes that has, it has a different kind of pressure, I would say. <laughs> uh, works in a very different way, uh, but I enjoyed the combat of it. I enjoyed the quests. Obviously, again, highly thematic. Uh, I'm really looking forward to getting the chance to continue through that campaign. I definitely want to try out the new story mode. We actually talked about this on our podcast. Yeah, there's new adventure mode, adventure mode that that's what it makes was. it uh, right. even easier to just explore, mm -hmm. which is what I like so much is that sense of exploration in so many yeah, games. Yeah, I think anyone who comes from video games and board games is, is used to that. Let's check every corner for everything. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, my number five, uh -huh is Paladins of the West Kingdom. All right. So pretty close to yours. That's, that's my number five spot. But this, yeah, it just really, really impressed me. You know, worker placement is a genre that we've seen many times. And usually it's in a place, uh, at least traditionally, of more Euro games uh, that are on the more hardcore strategic end. And this is no exception to that. But it does things in a way that, for me, felt a lot more interesting. I loved the idea of having your own personal board. So like you said, you're not it's not about just competing for spaces. It's about I know there's maybe there's five things I want to do, but what order do I do them in? And maybe if I do this, that gives me another worker, which gives me even more options. And then how do I work that around to a brand new set of things that I can do? Uh, I, I just loved all of that. And also I thought for such a heavy game, not super, super taxing as a lot of these worker placement games can be. No, I mean, yeah. that was really impressive when you seemed to be really focused in on that. And another movie. small thing I forgot to mention, we even talked about this after we played through the first time, was I was like, I was doing, I felt like I had an engine, but I can't tell you my engine. Like, usually it's just like, <laughs> yeah, I did this, this, to this. I'm like, no, I just, it was just doing things and like, just worked. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, but I liked it that way because it wasn't like, because usually when you do that for like a deck building, I'm like, yeah, I just thinned my deck out and just went full power. Right. Or superpower in DC. It's not like one strategy that you can say, oh, this is how you play. Uh, there's all these different moving parts that you can do. So we're on the mind number five. Yeah, let's do number five. This, this is one is one. this is definitely one I'm I know it's gonna be high, I think it's gonna be high on your list, but it's the King's Dilemma. This is a legacy game, but unlike some of the other ones, first of all, it's not based on a previous game. <laughs> but this one's really more about debate and making choices. Because the way the game works is you will play um, I, what, what would you call it, a faction, a house? Uh, they call it a house, I believe. A house? Yeah. And this house usually has a theme to go on and sort of to direct you on how you should be making choices. Because you're going to get some decisions that, you know, you as a person probably wouldn't make this, the, a certain choice, but they will. Like, you're going to come up against, like, slavery, you know, religion, other religions, uh, trading, you know, metal or from mercenaries and stuff. So, like, some things that, like, you maybe be like, I'm not going to do this, but your group's going to, your, or your house is going to be like, we're for that. <laughs> and the way, because of that, the way it works is, like, out of all the legacy games I've played, this has been one of my favorite. Because the stickers, I feel like, are more about, because you made a choice instead of just, oh, a city got sick, like, because of bad luck, a city got an outbreak or something. It just worked really well for me. And I think it's the only legacy game where I want to play, like, when we finish a round, I want to play another one, not because I want to finish the legacy, but because I'm like, oh, I like this. I want to play more. I think it's the first time either of us has ever had a legacy game in their top ten. To be part of that is because uh, we're usually behind, but aren't <laughs> able to get a group together to play them to get a judgment of them. But uh, uh, in this case, particularly in this year, I think I think even after all the ones I've played, that's probably the first one that I think is worthy of it. <laughs> no, and but the reason why it's definitely lower too, even though I say I love these games, I can do afterwards is it's still a legacy game. Still need to get the same five people. I'm just not a fan right now of the whole legacy style. I don't know. But this one does it the best for me. 
All right, is it my turn again? Yeah, it is. Okay, I don't remember how this works. Oh, no, wait, no. <laughs> I finish with my five, so it's the, my four now. I just... <laughs> yep, I, yep, go ahead. Yeah. You're in charge of yeah. these numbers. My number four is Lockup, a role player tale. This is the worker placement game in the uh, role player tale series. You are all in prison, and you're pretty much trying to make your gang the toughest around. And you're going to do that by placing workers on the board to get resources, maybe craft different items. But the idea behind this, instead of their first to the worker placement gets that spot, everyone's going to place their workers, and you can go to the same spot, but they're going to have numbers on them. And whoever's strongest is going to get to go first, and depending on the space, there could be a first reward, second reward, maybe you get nothing, depending on what's going on there. And you can place some of your guys secretly, but only two. So there's this whole fun decision process, it's not simply, I want that, it's, do I want to trick people to think I want that? Or do I want to go over there? Or do I, I'm fine with third place there because I only need one cube. But then there's also these suspicion cubes where they might do a raid. So like, I want to avoid that place. Really loved how that worked out. It was just so much fun for me. I think that's another one alongside Paladins that shows that it's, in this case, they're both worker placement, but it's like it's possible to take from very familiar genres and do very different things with mm -hmm. them, which I think is pretty cool. All right. Now it's my turn. I'm keeping. I'm keeping track. Uh, my number four, baby. My number four. God, I'm looking at my list right now. Like, should I move things around? <laughs> still, I'm not going to. Uh, my number four is Marvel Champions. Uh, so this is the newest LCG from Fantasy Flight, cooperative with the Marvel theme. Again, sucker for a good license that I really enjoy. Uh, and it does a lot of the things that we've liked about pretty much every uh, co-op LCG so far between the two of us. Um, I, was, I was also a big fan of Arkham Horror LCG. With this one, what is nice is that all these scenarios are more standalone. I don't need to worry about keeping up with a campaign. I can buy the packs when I like them. And also, in terms of the gameplay, I do think there's a lot of fun uh, with the synergy between players, being able to play actions outside of your turn. This hero alter ego thing where you can switch your abilities depending on what's doing, which is also very thematic. And at the end of the day, I'm a huge Marvel th fan. So uh, to see it done in a very different way from something like Legendary, maybe more akin to Sentinels of the Multiverse, um, with all the those kinds of crazy keywords and combat stuff that a lot of fan Final Fantasy games have, uh, but Fancy Flight, <laughs> Fancy Flight. <laughs> I said, I, I, well, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, the point Fantasy is, Fancy Flight <laughs> needs to make a Final Fantasy game. <laughs> yeah, so then I can just be confused for the rest of my life. Um, I do really like this game, and I'm looking forward to buying more packs uh, as the months go on. We'll see in a year from now if I'm really fully committed to it still, but I think the core gameplay, even just in that base alone, strong enough for me to, to hit number four. Uh, now my number three. Mm. Oh, man, we're in the top three now. And, and really, again, like... These could be switched. Honestly, I didn't, like, these are not, these could all be number one. <laughs> Everything on my list could be number one. <laughs> it's all moot. Uh, my number three is Detective City of Angels. So this is from Van Ryder Games, mystery solving game that is competitive, possibly cooperative, depending on how you play it, where one player is the chisel, sort of the GM, and they are conducting a mystery and everyone else is walking around a board and trying to solve it and would do it before any other detectives do it. Uh, I love mystery solving games. Of course, last year both Detective and Chronicles of Crime were on my list. Of course, we love Mythos Tales and Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Uh, there's a bunch of these that are really fun. This one, uh, in some ways, uh, in terms of theme, I prefer it to some of those other ones. I think that the mysteries themselves are very, very strong. And uh, while there are some issues I have with like, some downtime stuff, uh, they're not enough to take away from me the overall effect of the amount of joy I had trying to solve those mysteries and looking forward to getting through to even more in the box and more difficult ones. And that's not even also getting into it. It even comes with modules to design your own mysteries, which is crazy. Uh, so as, as a mystery solving guy, and for, honestly, even though I loved both those games I mentioned, Chronicles and Detective, they were both lower on my list last year. Still made my top 10. But I think for me, this one is overall more successful for that genre of what I really like about it. Which, All right. Yeah. So that's my number three. So my number three. Or number four. No, three. you're right. You're three. Okay. We're on three. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, you handle the numbers. And definitely, I mean, I agree with you, honestly. For me, it was like my top five are all of them were ones that I'm like, <laughs> all Ask the games tomorrow. I want to play, keep playing <laughs> of the most. So I love them all very dearly. But my number three is Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon. This is the newest sort of story campaign game from Awakened Realms. 
And it plays similar to Seventh Continent where you play tiles that, or not tiles, cards down and you visit them to do things. And the story has just been this really intricate, like choices you write down on a little sheet, what you do, and you have a little map that you begin you off with and the way the characters work where you have level up with the cubes and stuff and having food. I've loved almost all of it. And it has bothered me a little just because, like I, we joked a bit earlier how I'm like, come from video games, I want to check every corner. You can't do that here. <laughs> the grails have, not the grails, the, uh, the men here men here's <laughs> have timers on them. And you have to be careful about that. So it's this whole following. But that means when you can replay it to discover whole new things as well. So it just has hooked me so much. And one of the big things that helped me push it to the top was actually in our last setting, I got really angry. And... <laughs> Afterwards, I realized it was because I was so invested in it, and I know you liked the game. Uh huh. <laughs> like I don't know if it's in your top, no, in the top two, but no one knows but me. <laughs> I was really. It took actually a lot of strength to be like, what if I just soloed a bit for a while? <laughs> like I, I wanted, but I feel like similar to watching a movie ahead of you or something. I'm like I don't want spoilers for what this happened, even though it could replay and stuff. So right, there's different because paths. I had that such that desire to go back to it. I'm like this hat. It, it's earned its top three spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, I so, mean, that's a, that's a big one. That's a big one. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I'll but, never tell. <laughs> my number two. Number two was Detective. Oh. Agreeing with you, the mysteries were great. I think they worked really well. Mechanics and a big part to me was you could do solo, you could do cooperative, or the competitive. Because like some things in the competitive, I'm like, I'm not crazy about this. But it was still fun, and then the cooper. Oh, but I could just do cooper. Oh, the solo, the solo was great. It just all of it worked out really well, and I love the whole idea of, especially when you are playing with someone that the, the chisel against you'd be like, "Is he though telling me the fake card, or is this the best answer I can get?" Like it just worked all really well. That I was just, it, I just loved it. I just, I think for mist of the mystery games I've played, it's definitely near the top. Yeah, yeah, it does It does a lot right. It's really good. <laughs> all right, this, now here we go. Well, it's not much more to say that because yeah, I feel like you said something. <laughs> yeah, I already said all my stuff about it. It's really good. Love Van Ryder games. But that's why when you're talking about it, I'm like, I'm just going to stay quiet. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we do it. Stay, Keep it close to the vest. All right, uh, now my number two. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number two, let me just make sure. Yeah, huh, that's that, that's correct. My number two is Tainted Grail of the Fall of Avalon. <laughs> wow, we have so many shuffles between us. <laughs> we really do, which uh, happens. I feel like fairly often between our lists, usually by year by year. Um, and uh, yeah, for the reasons you said, I mean, it's no shock that Seventh Continent was both our number ones a couple years back. Mm-hmm. And this very much is in that same vein. The things that I've said similar to other games, even on this very list that are my favorite games, exploration, discovery, narrative, theme, you get that in spades here. Yeah, it's really great. And even uh, beyond that, I love the combat system. I think it's this very creative... Card um, matching style. Yeah, you're, you're, it's like almost this puzzle that you're playing as you go. And it gives me the same sense that I've gotten from... Because uh, it really is kind of in the same genre as games like Midara, even Gloomhaven. But oh, absolutely. The, but the difference is the combat, rather than being the f- core focus of the game, it is a huge aspect of it, but it doesn't feel like now it's time to go to a separate board and here's a whole map and here's my tactics. It's someone really actually, sewn in to the, yeah. to the narrative. I actually it. read on uh, that that someone said like how Gloomhaven, uh, the combat is sort of the star of it. You're leveling up, make, starting to make these characters who can do these crazy things and get instant kills apparently, which we haven't <laughs> seen. But in this one, it's like the combat, as you said, it's not less combat as we expect, like moving around and doing things. It's, it's a puzzle solving thing. Yeah. Especially with also diplomacy too. I love, it just, it worked really well. Yeah. And I'm going to say this, if you didn't put like uh, Tainted Grail in your like top five, yeah. I was going to be like, okay, I can solo this. <laughs> I'm like, that has confirmed like, yes, I was right. He loved the game too. I got to wait. <laughs> you got to wait. Unless you can set up two separate games right. at the same time. I'm really curious now what your number one is. So technically I'm first. I, I guess, gotta, yeah. Yeah, I got to say my number one first. So I think this is definitely a year because I'm pretty sure I know what yours is. <laughs> yeah, and, I accidentally made it clear. Well, I know on. it's not mine because you yeah. already said it. Okay, uh, good. And uh, Again, hard choice, but my number one is The King's Dilemma. Um, I uh, completely agree with everything that you said. This is my favorite legacy game. Honestly, it's the first legacy game I've played that I would wholeheartedly say I actually like. 
I think that the the gameplay style of this one, as you said, it's a negotiation game. It's a voting game uh, in in a sense. For for me, it what it does so well is uh, the the story the story of it, the theme of it. It is about that role playing and the the narrative and uh, again the discovery of new events that come out. It's extremely thematic and the storytelling aspect of it to me more so than I think any other legacy game just really lends itself to the legacy component. Whereas I feel like a lot of these games including Betrayal, Risk, Pandemic, they try to take an existing system and say, now let's add a story to it. And it doesn't always work out. This was, let's make a story game from the ground up and move onward with it. And I'm always like, look excited to play another game. I think that the way the, the mechanics mesh with the theme is really smart. It feels like of a piece. Just the, you know, the fact that a legacy game was that, felt that different and innovative, and I liked it that much. It was a hard choice, but uh, yeah, that's my that's my number I mean, one. I can't that's my number argue one. with that. The king's think... dilemma was solved with the number one. <laughs> <laughs> well, my number one. Tell is... the people. Tell the people what it is. It is wingspan, and I know this has been a really big one for a lot of people. But yeah, you know, it's boring. But I loved it. It did everything <laughs> right for me. I mean, it has beautiful art and animal. I tend to love things with animals, but it didn't do it in a way that was like simple just for the animals like they made sense it was this cool engine style i always want to play more i'm excited for expansions i almost like um what was the previous game on your list i'm totally blanking now you're talking, oh uh, like god of war i want to see the other systems but like i because i like dinosaurs i'm like man how cool would it be to do dinosaurs with this kind of deal but it just works so well it's so fun to draw things and think how these birds work and some of them are like oh the bird that like knocks other eggs out of the nest and lays eggs does something similar to that in the game it just Everything worked right for me, and um, and I think a small this is a small thing, but unlike a lot of the other ones, like King's Dilemma, which I do love and want to play a game after each time we play it, you mm-hmm. know, and I think it's the only non-party game that has had that for us that I could think of. Uh, yeah, it's rare. It's not a campaign, and to me sure. that has pushed some things up because sometimes it's just I want to be able to sit down and play a game and just say that was good. Yeah. And that's why I, I Wingspan drew to me. Finally, it was the one I had to decide at number one. So you'll notice Wingspan was not on my list, which was, um, I, it was like on my list to, at first, you know, things moved around. But um, part, part of it is, and you can make the same criticism, I'm sure, about other games on my list. So I'm a hypocrite, but it's fine. <laughs> um, I felt like while it was a really strong, solid game that I loved, for me, it didn't there wasn't any like one really new Thing that made it stand out in my in my for me personally. Well, no, no, mind. actually, two things on your list, same argument. Right, right. No, I mean that's fair. I mean you can say the thing about but, Outer Rim, but I, I don't think that's a problem as much as like what. It's just the reason right. that it didn't make my top because ten. Because we're choosing the top our top ten favorite games, and I knew that was this kind of idea was going to come. I didn't know it was going to come up for you with Wingspan. I think it's a fair argument, but that's why I was like, I do love those cooperative LCGs, for example. But I'm like, I enjoy the Arkham theme a bit more than like Marvel heroes and Mm. I think well ideally playing I like that story more though I understand it's hard to get people together that and you said the Stingle and campaigns so I'm like that's what finally put it off the list for me kind of that kind of stuff so I thought you didn't like campaigns (laughs) I thought that pushed things I didn't but Arkham works I just I guess they push it down but I can still love it (laughs) no um I um it's also that came before when we played as many campaigns now we have like three times as many so it's like I, I I also part of me felt secure knowing that Wingspan will be represented on your list, <laughs> so I didn't. I wouldn't feel too bad about leaving it off. I am actually really surprised Marvel Champions was nowhere on your list because that honestly shocks me. I thought that would have been somewhere. In the I top thought side. about it, but it was just like I for a card game for if I want that Marvel fix, I think Legendary does a fantastic job. Uh, for the cooperative games, I really think I enjoy Arkham and the Lord of the Rings game more. It right as of now, you know, maybe if we got more expansion, I got to mess with decks more. I might feel that way, but. It was just, I think, I'd, these 10 games are ones I'd rather have at the table. I mean... Yeah, I mean, I think it comes down to what else came out in the year. But I'm also thinking... Absolutely right. I'm like, you put Keyforge on your list last year, and I feel like you didn't like that a lot more than you didn't like <laughs> Marvel Champions. Maybe, <laughs> But I yeah. think it comes down to what else is it's going up against in the current year. I mean, it's, of course, we're all we're very, you know... There's all kinds of factors just related to our weird personalities that can change things. Is there anything else that you like? You're surprised didn't make one list or the other. Um, I didn't have either of um, uh, the new role player. Cartographers was on my list for a while and got pushed off. But uh, I love cartographer single player. The multiplayer I'm not as crazy about, and that's mm. why I didn't make my list. 
but the, the I and I was really curious to hear your single player because you just did it. I liked them thing. both. I thought. Yeah, I thought no, I mean I great. liked it, but yeah. I think the single player was much better, in my opinion. Um, I'm trying to think some of the other ones I put. I mean, I mentioned the two like I didn't put Lord of the Rings or Marvel, but I I was like I know that you're probably gonna put them on there. I knew the Marvel like that's a he's gonna say that <laughs> unmatched. I really did love that game, and I do plan on Actually, it. that's my, my biggest surprise non I list. plan on buying more sets. At the end of the day, the for a game that's 1v1, you know, to really stand out to me, it's got to do something really special. And that game, I think, does, but there were just 10 other games that I liked better. It was just, I, at the end of the day, I had to cut it. Um, and uh, the other one, uh, well, Wingspan, I already talked about. Uh, Letter Jam, I really liked, too, uh, and with, with more time experience. I was thinking about that first, a runner up. I've had... It's a really fun word party game. I think it's much easier to have is- run into its issues that we saw, like yeah. with sometimes letters. I don't. I yeah. and I don't know. <laughs> that, no, I'm just saying that's why it's not top. It didn't make the yeah. top ten, but yeah, I do yeah. want to play that so much more. It's definitely. It was probably going to be the honorable mention if it didn't have Madara. <laughs> yeah, Madara is another. Uh, the last minute, even today, I was like, oh, I kind of forgot about Madara. I do like that game a lot, but. It's it's a it's a huge campaign and it's just I don't know and I feel like yeah Tainted Grail is that kind of but more what I like. Well, no, I mean I think that's a fair reason and but it's a good honorable mention, really. Good. And like I said, the reason why I put it as honorable is I think it does deserve to be on there. But I think once I hit chapter two, where they I think they're gonna fix a lot of the issues, it will probably be my list. Whenever that comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some games that you didn't get the chance to play that you regret? That so I, the three big ones, or not the three biggest, but the three that I chose to talk about is uh, Obscurio. This is one I've mentioned a lot. I saw and didn't see. I've heard good things about, just never really sat down to. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Artemis Project. This is like, it was a Kickstarter, and it's just a dice management game, and I like that kind of stuff. And the last one is one we technically played a little, <laughs> and it's one that I was really happy with and wish I got to play more, but that was the Abomination game from Plaid Hat. Like, I was like, I don't know if any of these would make my top 10, like, because we didn't even play a full game of that one. But right, right. like, when we played that two rounds, I was hooked. I was like, this, is, this seems really fun. I want to piggyback on that and mm-hmm. say like, the Plaid Hat game suite, <laughs> that honestly, um, oh, Af- yeah. Aftermath is a big you, one. This is the thing is, you've got to see more of that. So. <laughs> also, Quirky Circuits. Like, I demoed both of those, and they're really, all three of those we demo, I demoed, and they're so yeah, fun. Yeah, that's when we split it up. But I just, you know, I didn't have to play a full game, unfortunately. Um, and then also for me, uh, another big one was Taverns of Tiefenthal. I just heard a lot of great things about it from, uh, from uh, I believe it's Wolfgang Varsh, who also has done so many other things, Quacks of Quedlinburg. Yes. And um, I just heard great things, and that, that one seemed like it could be a really fun, strong game to, to try out. I, I want to say one other thing about the entirety of my list and kind of a t- t- comment about the year as a whole, but uh-huh. particularly the games we like. All of the games on my list, uh, and uh, other than two of them, but also including some of my runners-up, all, they all had solo modes. And in fact, some of the ways I prepared to decide on this list was playing through the solo modes. And I just love that. I love that. It used to, even last year, even as short a time ago as last year, that was not the case. No, it's, you're absolutely right. I mean, so many games now have that, and it's awesome. And I don't know if you've done, but Wingspan Solo Mode, I loved. That's another reason why it's up there. Wingspan Cartographers I mean, and Lockup. I brought both up Detective, have it. how it hits any player and how you want to play it. I mean, Tainted Grail, you could just play single. And like I said, I was super tempted. <laughs> yeah. Like, they all, like all of them. I didn't do the Lockup. You told me about that one, but yeah. And <laughs> almost all of them have it, and I think that's just. Just great, and they're all like well implemented. It's so cool that that's a trend now. I actually, uh, I think I brought up in our podcast, but we mentioned another game we played. This didn't make our list, but Museum. I remember thinking like, this needs a solo mode. Why doesn't it have a solo? <laughs> yeah, mode? Yeah, I like that. That should be almost expected nowadays, depending on the genre of. Game. I mean, yeah, like there's certain games probably. Obviously, cool. like the two on my list that didn't have it are Growl and King's Dilemma. <laughs> they wouldn't make any sense with the solo. I'll say two other legacy games we didn't get to play: Machi Koro Legacy mm-hmm. and another big one, Clank Legacy, came yeah. out this year. Uh, so we didn't get the chance to try those out, but. Clearly a big year, clearly legacy isn't going away, and clearly narrative campaign style games aren't going away. Uh, yeah, especially because they can sell those minis with that. <laughs> but uh, it's, it was a good year. It was mm-hmm. a really good year, a lot of really strong games. Uh, we had some surprises for sure, but we'd be interested to hear what your opinions are on this. Where do you land on these lists? Which of our choices do you agree with or disagree with? And what games did we completely not even mention uh, that you think are deserving of a spot? you got to comment down below, because we really want to know oh, yeah. what the answers are. 
are uh, to those questions. We'll be reading them actually pretty soon uh, because we're gonna do a, a Meeple Gallery video probably much closer to the end of the year, but we wanna get that out and just, so we wanna hear your top 10s, so <laughs> be quick. <laughs> yeah, let us know what you think. Otherwise, I think that's it. I think we wrap it up for, uh, for 2019. It was a fantastic year for board games and hopefully 2020 will be just as good as will our channel in the next you know, year. <laughs> well, we look forward to the next decade. But until the actual new year comes, I'm Will. I'm Jonathan. This has been Roll for Crit. We want you to like and subscribe. And if you have the chance, take a look at our Patreon. Thank you for being a friend. Subscribe to our channel and back again. Okay. <laughs>